All right, everyone, so for day one of our Android development class, part two, I've got a uh, syllabus for you, of course, and uh, the way the class will work. So uh, if you weren't here before, you need to go to the computer window. On your particular computer, open up computer at the top left. Inside of computer icon up there, top left. Then you're going to go to the network location, and in the network location, no, I think you guys do need the pink sheet. Mm -hmm. On the network location, then you'll be right here, classroom data, drive Z. Z as in zebra, double click that one, classroom data Z. Z as in zebra. And you'll scroll down alphabetically to find Campos Android 2. You'll also see Campos Android 1 is still there, so if you were new this month, you weren't here on a previous, if you weren't there on a previous, if you weren't here on a previous month, you will be getting um, items in part two. So from last month, the items are still there, but you're going to focus on part two here, Campus Android 2. If you open up that folder, what you're going to see is the syllabus. We'll look at that in a moment. You can print it a little later. Something called Cordova All Plugins. We'll look at that later. And then the work that we ended up with last week, last month, last course. What you want to do at the moment, uh, at the least, all you really need to do right now is copy that syllabus from my folder to your desktop or your flash drive. So if you don't have flash drive, of course, you can email it to yourself. But copy that, that uh, PDF. You don't need the other ones yet. Copy the syllabus to the desktop. Let's take a look at it. And so here on the syllabus, this is part two of the class, March 3rd to March 24th, uh, Tuesdays in this room. This description is right out of the catalog, but basically we're talking about web languages like HTML, etc. We're going to use those languages that we started last month uh, to create a project that can be ported to Android as well as iOS, Windows Phone, iPads, Blackberries, whatever. This technology can uh, can be exploited for everything. That's already been signed, so I'll take it. So this technology that we're going to learn can be applied to every platform. Uh, thank you. We'll use free and open source software. We'll create our projects at no cost. Part one preceded this class, and then comes part three next month. We're going to use freely available web resources, specifically Cordova, also known as PhoneGap. You might have heard of that. I think PhoneGap's a slightly more famous version of the name of this thing. Cordova is the one you should be more accustomed to actually using. We'll see why a little later, but Cordova is the framework, is the technology that we're going to use to create an Android project. Cordova is what will take our HTML project and convert it basically to all the platforms. You will have a fully functional app by the end of the course, but as I said last month, you should not be expecting to make the next Facebook the next Instagram, the next Snapchat. We're not going to get to that level because that requires a lot of infrastructure, a lot of cloud infrastructure, database uh, servers and such. We're not going to get to that point because that's when stuff doesn't get free anymore. Everything else that we're going to talk about is free, but then when you want to talk about actual infrastructure, it costs money to have an app, even a free app, especially if it runs on a database. But I will point you to various resources if you want to go outside the box. We'll have lecture and demo, of course. Uh, here's our SLOs. We will download, set up, and use Taco. I've been teaching this class for three years now, and I've seen the evolution of this software, these tools. And honestly, if we were only going to target an Android environment, this class would be a lot easier, because we only have to learn one thing, Objective-C with Android Studio. But if you want to tap into the other markets, Android has the largest market share. More Android phones out there are out there than the other ones. But if you want to tap into the iPhone market, the Windows market, the Mac market, the Linux market, your classic Android app project 
It has to be reprogrammed for all the platforms. And so I've taught this class for three years using Cordova, which allows us to translate our HTML projects to the appropriate platforms. And the latest evolution of that is something called Taco, which we'll look in detail. It's tools for Apache Cordova, Taco. It'll make sense when we do it. And this is the latest and the greatest. And honestly, in me doing it for these years, this is much better than I used to teach it. So you guys are going to see it for the first time, and it's better than before. We're going to use that to set up a basic structure for our Cordova projects, deploy to virtual or real devices. So if you do have a real device, you'll be able to run your apps on it. Or if you don't have a real device, a real Android device, you can use virtual devices. We'll continue our jQuery mobile project from last month and set it up so that it can use the device features like the camera, um, accelerometer and compass, databases, file storage, your contacts and text messages and all of that stuff that a device can do, our project will be able to tap into that. It's recommended you took part one, but if you didn't, you should at least have knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I'll give you the project from last time so you're not starting from empty-handed. Also, basic computer knowledge should be expected if you're uh, having a uh, little trouble using basic computer skills and such. If you recently discovered there's a right click, uh, you might want to take another class before this class to get up to speed. <coughs> um, and I've read a book here that I recommend. So the problem with books, especially technology books, is they go out of date so fast. And so I've got here PhoneGap 3.x, and I believe right now it's on PhoneGap 5. They haven't published the newest version of it. This stuff zooms by so fast. Every six months there's something new, so a book doesn't get published as often as it could. But that's a book that I recommend for the concepts of this class. And notice it calls it PhoneGap, but a.k.a. Cordova, a.k.a. Taco. Any questions on page one? Page two, if you have any DSPS needs, let me know, and we can make accommodations. If the syllabus changes, I'll let you know. There's the calendar. When it is four weeks, so we've got four weeks here, and this is what we're going to be covering this week. Usually we go a little bit faster than this. This is like a very conservative estimate of what we'll accomplish. Usually we'll get further than this, as I've, as I, as, as I've seen previously. But we'll be setting up the software, creating devices, um, creating projects and testing them and all that great stuff. And so that's what's coming up here. Any questions on page two? We'll have the ability to tap into those things, but we're not actually going to use them. And I'll be pointing us to various resources where you can use Bluetooth capability because there's a lot of cool things you can do. You can use the camera to scan QR codes. We're not going to get to that, but I'll show you where to look if, your app, if you want to do that in your app. Page 3 is the boring page. You've already seen this from last month, but I have to say it again. New class. This is the code of conduct, the official school policy. It's on the wall up here. The school policy, it's on the syllabus. Basically, students are subject to charges of misconduct and removal for violation of these student code of conducts, including but not limited to the following. So, possession of weapons, explosives, or objects which may be used as weapons or to threaten bodily harm, use possession, distribution, or sale of alcoholic beverages on campus, etc. I mentioned it last time, I'll mention it again. If you don't agree to any of these, you're welcome to not take the class, but they're basic school concepts, safe work environment concepts, theft or damage is to district property, so keep dropping that mouse, it might uh, get you kicked out. Um, be careful about it. And uh, you, are, uh, you adhere to all of that by being in the class. Any questions on anything on the syllabus or the course in general? Yes? Is there an online generic resource for that uh, phone VF3 information? Uh, yeah, we're going to look at very, a lot of online resources that supplement the book, but I believe the author also is working on a new version of it, and you can get it online. I have to look up the author. I forgot to put the author and, the, and his or her website, uh, but you can get all this information online, definitely. And I'm going to supplement it all with a lot of handouts. Last month I didn't give handouts, 
for this month because things are going to get more complex. I've got lots of handouts for you that detail all the things we're doing. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah. Yeah, the term app to me means a native app mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of like a responsive design that's going to work anywhere. But you're not teaching responsive design, correct? No, no, because they I don't put them synonymously. An app is any software that you can download from an app store. The iTunes store, Google Play store, Windows store, whatever. It's an app that you're going to download from some marketplace. And what ends up there could be created via the classic method of a native project, or the way we're going to do it, which is a hybrid project. We've got a web project that will only go to the web. We've got a native app that is only programmed in C-sharp, for example, for the App Store. And we've got a hybrid, which is what we're doing. We're taking web technologies, still wrapping it around the, the native code of, of C-sharp. Taco does it for us. But then that creates an app, an actual APK file that we upload to the App Stores for sale or for free. So the responsive element doesn't really apply because that's just how are you designing the look of your project. Responsive design is just really how what's the look of it. So um, hopefully that makes some clarification. That's a great question. Any other questions on the class or the syllabus? All right, so let's um, check this out here. Go ahead and open up your web browser. Open up your web browser and let's go to the website developer.android.com. This is straight from the horse's mouth, straight from Google. Google owns the Android operating system. Um, developer.android.com this is where we would go to get all the information for the whole process of creating an app for the uh, Android, for Google Play, it used to be called Android Marketplace, Google Play, their store. Now, of course, like I said, we're focusing in this class on Android, but what we're learning with a few tweaks can be applied to iPhones, uh, Kindles, whatever. It's just that you need the core tools to develop for those platforms. The core tools for Android are found here, developer.android.com. If I was going to do this for the iPhone, I would need to go to, I believe, developer.apple.com. And this is software that's free on Android for us to create projects that work on a, uh, on a you know, phone, on a tablet, on the Android TV, uh, like Chrome, what do they call those? The Chrome Chrome boxes? Oh, Chromebooks. Chrome stick. Chromecast. Those ones that you. Oh. Yeah. Chromecast. Chromecast. So basically, it's all together. Android is an operating system that has a lot of reach. So we can create projects to target all of those devices on Android, and iPhone, and Windows Phone, and Kindle. It's just that the big problem uh, is that I can't, I cannot teach the iPhone aspect of things in this class because you need a Mac to do the final step to convert the code into native iPhone code, which is either, ob either Objective-C or uh, Swift. At the moment, to be a developer for anything iOS, you have to be on a Mac. Um, you can try virtual devices, although that's also complicated, but in short, in this class, I can only teach because we are limited to have Windows computers here. If we had Macs here, if you had like a Windows computer here and a Mac on the side over here, you know, we could do both. But then we, I can only have half the students because it takes up a lot of space. So we're going to focus on Android development, which does have the larger market share. I believe it's around 70 to 80 percent market share globally. A lot of people use Android devices. Maybe iPhone has more fame but Android devices have more users. And so we're going to talk about that. And notice on the top left, there's these three big pillars of a process. Design, develop, distribute. Basically, part one of the class last month was design. Create the project, the interface, your icons, the look of it, animations, all of that. And there's plenty more to learn there under the design portal. 
but that's one part of the process. Design, uh, the structure, the layout, wireframe it, all of that. This month is a little bit more where we focus on the develop aspect. What's the actual software that we use and the code that lets us access the camera, all of that stuff. And then month three is the distribute aspect of things. We've got a project, fully functional uh, Android project, an APK file. Now we need to get it out to the world. We need to distribute it. Month three. And on the top right we have developer console which eventually we'll look into detail but this is where we actually log in, upload our project, check our stats, how many downloads, crashes, all of that. Android 6.0 is the latest version of the operating system. It evolves every once in a while. 6.0 is the latest one. A caveat, if you do get the Moto E, it is not capable of running 6.0. It stops at 5.5, I think. But that's not that old at all. If you've got like an Android 3.0 device, you can still manage in this class, but if you've got an Android 2.x device, you're not going to get have a very good time in this class. If you've got an old Android device, our app might not be compatible because at a certain point even Google themselves says Android 2.2 buy update they're really affordable so it's not that I don't want to support the older devices is that even Google themselves eventually says you gotta move on there's new technology <coughs> get a 3.0 device and up if you're still in 2.0 welcome to 2010 yes we've got a Moto uh, G which has a 4.4.4 version that should be fine. You can use that. It's not worth going yeah. on the cheap one. It, it's totally fine. I think that if you've got at least 4.0 and up, you'll be fine. I think if you've got 3x, you'll be okay. If you've got 2x, uh, maybe not. So if you've got 4 and up, that's the best experience. This one tops out at 5.5. The bigger brother of this is the Moto G. That gets to 6. And then the bigger, bigger brother is Moto X but that's like $600. Don't worry about it. $40 for one that's second best is just fine. What about um, if you get an Android 6 tablet? Tablet should work, but make sure the, the OS, right, that it's not older than Android 3. And if it's 6, is that 6 inches or 6.0 OS? Uh, yeah, you'll need to, ch you'll need to check. Yeah, check. Now, unfortunately, people come in with a variety of devices, and uh, sometimes it goes really smoothly for some of you, and sometimes you struggle. And unfortunately, the less of the name brand your device is, if you get a Pantech tablet, you're going to have a little trouble. But if you get a nice Asus tablet, you get less trouble. If you get a Toshiba tablet, less trouble. If you get, you know, a uh, M-Tech tablet, a little more trouble, because Android devices can vary in so much quality, which is often reflected in the price, and so some of these more off-brand devices might not work as well, and you won't know if it's going to work until you do it. So I can't predict for everyone yet. What we would do at this site is we would go here and click on Get the SDK. The SDK is the Software Development Kit. This is basically all of the Android code. Um, we've only got two seats left, and you can either choose that one with no computer or the one in the middle with no computer. the seat right in the middle and so this is where we would get the software we don't need to download it don't click download it's a 500 megabyte download we don't need to get the software so this is where we would get the software at home we would get the software here and I have a handout for all of you and you'll get it in a moment but this is where you would go to download the actual source code of the, app, of the Android operating system. How it all works, how you can manipulate it, how you can make your own apps. And it comes with a software to develop it, Android Studio. A few years ago when I was teaching this, we would use Eclipse. How many of you have ever used Eclipse before? Okay, cool. You would attach the Android software to Eclipse, and then you would use Eclipse to make your app. Eventually, Google said, we're going to make our own version of it. We don't need Eclipse. We're going to make our own Android Studio. Everyone would run, ring, ring, ring their hands in anguish that now you have to learn a new thing. I learned Eclipse, and now I've got to learn a new thing. This stuff changes. It evolves. 
And so the latest of it is that you get Android Studio, you download it, it's like 500 megabytes, you, you install it and it becomes like one gigabyte. This is a lot of software for you to do this. You don't need to do it, don't click that download button here, it's already set up for us. But at home, you would go get it from here. This would give us the software to write our code, test our device, all of that. All the documentation is here, how to use it for Mac, for Windows, for Linux, etc. We're not going to use Android Studio at all, however, because Android Studio is only concerned with creating a project only for Android devices. We want to create a project that will also go to iPhone, Windows Phone, Windows 10, Linux, Mac, you know, you can create a project from what we've learned so far, create a project that'll go off to Mac OS X Al Capitan. We can create a project that'll target every platform. This will only target Android, so we're not using it. Instead, we're going to use this framework, this project. Let's go to cordova.apache.org. How many of you have heard of Apache before? Apache is both well known as a, as a server technology. Many websites run on the Apache server. But the Apache Foundation is a large global organization of interested parties that basically are stewards of technologies to make them better. And one of the technologies is Cordova. Cordova is one of the big projects of Apache Foundation, as well as other, other ones basically Cordova is what we're going to use in this class, not Android Studio, although it still relates to it, as we'll see. Cordova.apache.org. This is where you would go to download the software, read the documentation, get your work done. This is where you go to learn about how do I take my, my responsive or adaptive projects and convert them into all the platforms. Cordova does it. The cousin of that is PhoneGap. PhoneGap.com. If you look at both sites, PhoneGap.com, you don't have to, but if you look at PhoneGap.com and Apache Cordova, a lot of it seems very, very, very similar because it's all built on the same original code base. Like most open source, there's a trunk and people branch it off and make a whole bunch of cool things. Cordova is the trunk here, and that's branched off to PhoneGap. The big difference is that PhoneGap, there's a big name backing, one big name backing PhoneGap, whereas Cordova, many names are backing it. What's the one big famous name backing PhoneGap? Adobe. Adobe. Why are they famous? Photoshop, Photoshop Dreamweaver, Illustrator, Flash, all of these web technologies, PDFs. So a huge company is backing PhoneGap. And we will see <coughs> either or will work, and you'll often see documentation online, help and tutorials that'll, that will use either Cordova or PhoneGap. And basically it's the same core code. The big difference is Cordova is the hard way, PhoneGap is the easy way. Now oftentimes what happens with the easy way? Not free. No, I'm sorry, backwards, backwards. The, yeah, no, 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 the easy way. Oftentimes with the easy way, it's not free. We're going to do it the hard way, which is the completely free version. The easy way, PhoneGap, is the paid version. Because if you set up with PhoneGap, you will be able to take your code in your PhoneGap account, upload it, and it will convert it to the iPhone code, the Windows code, the BlackBerry code, the Android code, for a price, of course. You can look up the price. I'm not going to. It's not that expensive, but it does get expensive when you create more than one app. So that's why we're not going to use PhoneGap, although it's synonymous with Cordova. <coughs> PhoneGap is synonymous with Cordova. PhoneGap is backed by Adobe. Most of it is not free. But if you need to create that million-dollar app, pay up the $40, whatever it costs a month, or something, and then get that app out there and get rich. We're going to use Cordova, which is totally free. It's a little bit like you're on your own. And I think a lot of us are fine with that. We have the mentality. We can do it. We have the skills. We know what we're doing. We'll, we'll do it ourselves. 
phone gap is, is a lot more training wheels. So here at Cordova, again, we don't have to download anything about Cordova. We've got it on our computers. On your home computer, you would need to set it up, and I've got a handout for you. I'll get to that in a moment. But uh, Cordova is software that's built via NPM, uh, via Node. How many of you have heard of Node.js before? If you haven't, it's basically a foundation to build other projects. So this is the thing about this class. There's a lot of moving pieces. The easy way is to pull up Android Studio and get started, but that limits us. We have a lot of moving pieces, a lot of different software and things, but I've got handouts for you. I've taught this class for three years. I've put dozens of students through this course and they've made apps. We can see them up online. They're real apps that they can download. So it works. If you're struggling, I'll help you, of course. We'll help each other, but it works. And sometimes the failure point, unfortunately, your device is not compatible. Your computer is not compatible. If you try to do this at home and you've got an old Windows XP computer, you're going to struggle. If you've got a newer computer, you're going to do better. If you've got one with more RAM, you'll do better. If you've got a new Mac, you'll do better. This stuff works. It's complicated. I'm here to help you. I've got handouts. But honestly, app development is hard. That's why it's expensive. That's why it's lucrative. And so here's just going to sell you on why it's amazing. And trust me, it's amazing. PhoneGap is amazing. Cordova is amazing. You'll be able to make apps for all the platforms. But to make it even easier, here's what we're using in this class specifically. Let's go to taco.tools. Yes, there's a .tools nowadays. There's not just .com, .net, .org. There's .tools. There's .biz. There's .cool, actually. There's .xyz. Taco.tools. Taco, which is tools for Apache Cordova. <coughs> Taco. Designed for Cordova developers by Cordova committers. Keep a healthy dev environment, speed up your development, and automate your deployment on the cloud. Works with Ionic, PhoneGap, and all Cordova-based projects. And again, you don't have to download and set up any of this. It uh, is already done for us. The big brains behind Taco is Microsoft. So a big company behind this, really putting in their foot in the door of open source, believe it or not. Uh, they are working to create this project, which helps us use Cordova easier. Because the way I would teach this class is we would need to download about four different software packages to get all of this Cordova stuff to work. Now, Taco does it all. You download Taco, you set it up, you click Install Requirements, done. In the old days, I had three handouts that would say download the Java kit, download Ant, download this, set up this, set your path, all of that stuff. Taco does it all. Again, I'm pretty amazed by this too. When I learned about it, you know, six, nine months ago, I thought, I hope I can teach this in a class because this is going to be a game changer for my classes. You guys are guinea pigs. You're the first ones to see this. But I think it's going to work out well. Yeah. I've tested it lots of times. <laughs> so, Taco will let us will let us um, create a project quickly. Let me show you how quickly right now. On your start menu, go ahead and click start. Search down here for node, N O D E, node. You should see a result that says node command prompt. Go ahead and select node command prompt. And this, for some of us, will be a blast from the past, and for some of us, this will be terrifying. <laughs> this is how we're going to make our apps. What is this? DOS. The command prompt. The terminal. This is the ancient lands of computers, where you would type a command, and it would do what you tell it to do. Whereas nowadays, we have the graphical user interfaces um, that we're so used to, where we have a button to click on and icons to drag and all of that underneath 
All of that is, of course, you know, a basic interface. But what we're going to do in this class is use DOS, use the command prompt. I have in my sheets that I'll give you soon the core commands that you need to know. Because uh, there's obviously you know 200 commands. They used to publish DOS with a manual that thick. Remember that. Now you only need to know like six or seven commands. I've got them on a handout. Why would we bother with this if we have a beautiful interface with Eclipse or Android Studio or Xcode? Because we are able to do commands very, very quickly here to accomplish what we need to do. So just for fun here, um, your command prompt here again. I'll go into detail how it works exactly, but just to show you. Your command prompt. You type a command, you press enter, it does it. Let's type taco create taco space create space my project my project lowercase no spaces it does matter but just let's type that taco create my project taco space create space my project and press enter the first time you do it it's a little slower because it just has to gather the resources it might pop up to ask you would you like to share your demographic information yes or no doesn't matter I'll put no type the letter N and press enter you're not going to use any of the mouse here just type the letter N, and if, if it comes up like this, press N and then enter. If it doesn't pop up like that, just wait a moment. What it's going to do is it's, connect, it's going to connect to the repository of code. It's going to then uh, do what we tell it, which is to create a project. This project can be reused for every platform, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, etc. The first time we do it, it's going to be a little slow perhaps, but then it'll start to say it's downloading, it's setting up, what's that warning, don't worry about it, but it's creating a project, basic project, and um, it's like a universal project, it's a framework that will allow us then to create any kind of, of project on top of it. When you, did it ask you about the buffer size? If that's a little bit out of our scope, but if you can talk to me a little bit about that when we have some time, that might be useful for the class. But here, eventually, success. Did everyone get success? Yes. If you're not there yet, just wait a quick moment. Okay, mine says success. Your project using the blank template is ready to use, and in my case, it saved it into my user folder. Um, and it's quick tips here. Change the directory to your project, add platform, install. This right now, you know, if you've never done this, is daunting. You're used to clicking icons and getting it done that way. Here, eventually, you're going to learn like six commands, and you'll be able to do it much faster than waiting for the software to load, double-clicking the right command, finding the right menu. It's going to be six commands that you're going to memorize, type them, and you're done. And yes, in the beginning, it is daunting. And in the real world, this is very common. In the real world, real development studios and such, it's very common to use the command prompt than the pretty interface, than a graphical user interface, because it's a lot faster once you get up to speed. Change the directory to your project. If this were an icon on my desktop, I would double-click the My Project window, but we're not on the desktop, we're in DOS. Mine says I'm in the User Folder Lab. Does yours say the same? Yep. Okay. Type CD space, the name of the folder you just created, the name of the project you just created, which is My Project. If you typed it differently, type what you typed. The thing about DOS and such is it's not forgiving. If you mistype a command, it doesn't work. It doesn't know what that means. So if you called it My Amazing Project, you need to type CD My Amazing Project. CD is change directory. You're going to change from this directory into that directory, which is double clicking if you had an icon. CD space My Project, enter. Nothing happens until you enter. Now it says I'm on the C drive, in the user folder, in the lab folder, in my project. Is everyone there? Are you using your computer or my computer? Okay, let's take a quick look at that. 
We're going to get around here with some basic commands. I have a handout for you. Makes sense. Okay. 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 All right, so what is CD again? CD is change directory. We're changing from one folder directory to another folder, another directory. It ended up in the lab folder on the user folder. I'll, we'll show where that is with, uh, in Windows Explorer in a moment. Okay. Right now it's on the hard drive. Okay, so it's saying change to your directory and then add a platform. Taco platform add. It's type taco platform add. And here we can type what kind of project are we creating. We're creating at the moment Android. Taco Platform Ad Android, Taco Platform Ad iOS, Taco Platform Ad Windows. We will see a list of them in a moment, but this is the amazing part of it. Taking this blank project, now I'm going to target it to Android, and I can use the same project to target to all the platforms. The problem, of course, is we don't have a Mac computer here, so the, so the final building of it will not work if we try to do iOS. But anyway, type Taco Platform Ad Android. Enter. If you get an error, most likely you are not in the folder that it is expecting. You're still outside on the user folder, not inside of the My Project folder. If it worked, you'll get a bunch of feedback. It'll say something like creating Cordova project for Android, blah, 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 Android target 22, copying this and that, success. Did everyone get a success? Yes. Okay. So. Connect to a remote build. Don't worry about that one yet. Build your app. Taco build platform. Let's type taco build Android. We're taking our blank basic template and we're actually compile it, compiling it then for the native code. Um, Java. I misspoke earlier. Java is the native code for Android. Objective C is uh, iOS. C sharp is Windows. Java is the native code for Android. So here it would take our HTML project and convert the code basically for Android. Taco build Android. Enter. Eventually when that's done, this usually takes a little longer the first time because it has to set up all of these dependent check dependencies and check your software, make sure everything compiles right, but eventually we're going to then do either taco emulate Android or taco run Android. If I had my device and I had it plugged in, I could do taco run Android and it would run on my device. We're not going to get there yet because we need to set it up, but we will do taco emulate Android and it'll pull up a virtual device and run this project. So eventually that'll that'll finish. Um, and again, the first time we do it, I tried to make this as seamless as possible for us here. But eventually, you know, you're not gonna get sometimes you don't get feedback, just keep waiting. When there's a problem, it'll tell you. Uh, when there's a when there's a success, it might tell you, but it'll definitely tell you when there's a problem. That's the way command prompts often are. What was the last comment, please? Taco build Android right up here. I don't see only dots. It's me too. I see only dots. You're going to wait a moment and then eventually it'll start to say other stuff. It's connecting to online resources. It's checking your code. When you say build successful, then it's okay. That's right. So eventually you'll get build successful like that. Mine took 1 minute 41 seconds, yours may take more or less. The more times you do this, the faster it'll go. 
eventually it'll take five seconds when all of this is all compiled. But eventually I got to build successful total time, and it says right here, in the C drive, in the user folder, in the lab folder, in the my project folder, blah, 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 we have android.debug.apk. And APK is an Android package file. That's a real file that could be installed on a device. It's the debug version of it at the moment. Eventually we'll create the final build version, the, de the deployment ready version, but there's an app right now that we can load up to our device. We don't have a device, so we will do taco emulate Android. Enter, of course, it won't do anything until you enter. So many times people come to me, it's not working. I said, you press enter, and then they press it, and then it works. Blah, 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 default into the Nexus 5 emulator. So we're going to load up a, one of the default devices here, which is a Nexus 5. It's going gonna, it's gonna to load this up. We get another blank window here. Just ignore that for the moment. It'll probably say emulator, blah, blah, blah. And then another window looks like a Nexus. It is actually Windows Studio. Yeah. It's like 20 minutes just to yeah. install SDKs. <laughs> well, it's already done for us here. You're still yeah. going to wait for SDKs at home. but um, so anyway, this is starting to load up. Here's a virtual device that's starting to load up for me. If I was doing this on a Mac, I would replace all the commands that I've done simply with iOS instead of Android. Taco add platform iOS. Taco build iOS. Taco emulate iOS. And I would get the iPhone version. Oh, so you just have to do those commands on Yeah. That's the whole concept here. Build successful, installing it on the emulator, it's starting up. This is a little real device. Optimizing some things. So it's going to create like a real device right on your phone. It has some limitations. You can't make phone calls on it because then <laughs> everyone would be crank calling everyone. Um, but it's a fully functional device. On the virtual, on the computer, another limitation is you, when we when we work with vibration and such, your computer's not going to vibrate, so you would use the real device. You can use a camera if you've got a web camera. You can use a web camera in your app to test it. This is going to load up, I believe, Android maybe 5.0 or 6.0 on a device. Keep waiting a little bit more. It's charging. It's charging. Welcome, whatever keeps coming. Cordova, That's what we built on our template file. That is HTML. We'll see exactly what it all is in a moment. But if you got this far, take a step back. We have the spark of knowledge to start to build apps for any platform through Cordova, specifically Taco, the latest evolution of Cordova. And it's all in our fingertips. Anyone can create an app. You need the idea. You need a foundation. That was month one. Month one was the foundation of our project with jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is just a way to create an interface. Other ways are Sencha, Touch, Ionic, Angular. There's lots of ways to create an interface for a web project. You take all of that, you couple it with Cordova slash Taco, you've got an app. That goes off to the iTunes Store, Google Play Store, Windows Store, everything. Can everyone get the emulator up? It's a real emulator here. Click on that little circle there. If you're used to Android devices, modern ones especially, this looks exactly like my, my Moto right here. I've got a little middle circle. Click that middle circle. That's your home screen. So if you're on, uh, on an iPhone, you know that's the little button you press to get back to your home screen. Click that. That should kick you back to the home screen. <coughs> If it's slow, this is the problem that's going to happen when you do this on virtual devices. You're running a mini computer in your computer. This has a CPU, this has RAM, this has storage. It's a mini computer and it's running on your device. It's running on your computer, taking up its RAM, taking up its CPU cycles. Little computer. Uh, if you guys click on the little circle, did you go? Did it take you home? 
or is mine or is mine slow? Okay, what about that little one there? What about that one there? Uh, there we go. Eventually. Okay, so I clicked on the home button. It says welcome. Just click got it. If we had touch screens, we could touch the screen and actually use it like a real device, a real touch touch device. But because we don't, you have to use the mouse. Click got it. This is a real device here. There's a web browser. Click the web browser. It's going to go off to Google Chrome and it's going to go to a real web browser. I'm going to search for Victor Campos. Yes. Just a question. The touch screens are real big now. How much of a nuisance is it or ease is it to, to make this uh, to make this thing a touch screen if you so desire? In, in other words, if you want to make your app and well, obviously, the apps are touch screens. So, so is this this you said you can't use like a touch screen? What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that using this virtual device here, we have to use it with the mouse. If we had a monitor that we can touch, then we can use it actually like touch. So it is a, like a real kind of app that when you get it to the device, it is touch capable and everything. But here I'm just saying that it would be nice if we had touch monitors so that we can actually touch the screen like a real device. We have to use the mouse. Yes? Touch, touch and it's, uh, like, it's it doesn't quite... The question doesn't quite fit. Angular and jQuery Mobile and Ionic and such, those are ways to create an interface and a project, but those are independent because then we take those into Taco or Cordova. So anything should work. So I guess my understanding of that node is more of a structural software to create projects. You use Node. In the documentation we see that we use Node to actually install Taco. We would use Node to install Cordova or PhoneGap or many other projects. Nowadays it's like Node is almost kind of its own app store. Kind of. You use Node to type Node, install, Taco, and it does it. Node install phone gap and it doesn't. And Node can let you do a bunch of other things as well. So, so Node is required. Yes. If we look up on the um, documentation for either Cordova or Taco, you're going to see there that it says how to install it, and oftentimes it'll say like this npm install Cordova. That's Node Package Manager install Cordova on this computer through Node. Once it's installed, then you just run the Cordova command or the Taco commands. Alright, so here I'm just playing with this. It's a real device. Uh, I opened up a web browser. Again, it's kind of slow for me. My computer's running my recorder and a bunch of stuff. Your computer might be a little faster, but this is what you'll see. If you're running a virtual device, you're going to see that the better computer you have, the better experience you'll have if you're using virtual devices. You can run with a relatively old computer if you're going to then be testing on a real device, because the real device will handle your app. Your, your old Windows Vista computer will probably work, but it'll be really slow, even slower during this compiling phase. It was one minute a moment ago, it's four seconds now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's ten minutes per build on an old Windows Vista computer, but it'll work to some degree. Um, go back home one more time here on the device and click on the app drawer, this thing to see all your apps. Click on that, all your apps load up. And if you scroll around here, we've got an app called Hello Taco. That was our template. We didn't really specify anything about it. We just said, Taco, create my project. We didn't specify an icon, we didn't specify an icon or an app name, anything of that, so it just gave us the generic Hello Taco. But I'm showing you here, it's actually installed on this device. 
And if we get to our real device, we'll also have it really installed on our device, where we can actually pin it to the home screen, uninstall it, all of that stuff. And throughout the course, if you're going to use virtual devices, I would recommend do not close the virtual device because you're going to have to wait for it every time to load up again. You can simply go back to the home screen and uh, the home screen here, and then minimize the virtual device. Don't close it because you have to wait for it to keep loading up every time. But it is sucking up RAM and CPU and all of that. On mine, I'll probably be closing it because I can't run so many things at once. But for yourself, I recommend keep the virtual device running. Question. How do you minimize it or manipulate it? Is yours like off the screen and you can't see your icons? Yeah. OK, here's what you need to do. Um, you need to, on the keyboard, hold Alt and press Spacebar. This is an old Windows 3.1 trick. Hold Alt, press Spacebar. You see a menu? Yeah. On your arrow keys, move down to move. On move, press enter. And then, with your arrow keys, move the device so that it's not cutting off the, the top. And then press enter. And it moved it. Now you can grab it from the top. So one more time here. Alt, space. Hold Alt then Space, it brings up the menu. Then scroll down with your arrows and select Move and press Enter. And then with your arrows still on the keyboard, move it around, press Enter. You want to click it, it just disappears. So you don't want to click it, you want to use the keyboard. Wait, will you be able to download other apps like these virtual phones? Download other apps like, let's say, Instagram and such? Yeah. Um, I believe you can. I believe you can download things you wouldn't really want to because you're not going to get much use out of that. Um, I think you can. You just need to make sure you log in with your. Gmail credentials, and then it'll let you. But usually we'll be working on this to upload our own apps. Okay. All right, so have I sold you on the, on the promise of it yet? You ready to make apps? All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll give you these handouts, and then we'll actually start to do some real work. Uh, it's 7.10-ish. Let's come back at 7.20 and then we'll get started.